Senator Capito. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. DeBar, you, I, I love this one term that you used in your, in your statement, tel, uh, technology neutral, innovation open. Um, because I think we need to focus on solutions. I mean, everybody's talked about it. So as one of the things that we've seen in the data that mortality from natural disasters is significantly um, lower in more technologically advanced societies with access to energy and resilient infrastructure. Recent reports by reliability experts show that we are projected to go, we as a nation are projected to go backwards on our grid reliability this decade. And many point to some regulations that will lead to early power plant retirements. We also see the rise of the electric economy that's being, that's being um, moved forward rather rapidly. So, and, and all, everybody's mentioned that the most vulnerable are those that uh, are in the lower uh, economic echelon of our uh, of our society, and that's troublesome, obviously for me. So, how will extreme weather impact energy demand, and how how do you think grid reliability will impact our vulnerability in these events? Uh, yes, Senator. So, I I I, I agree with uh, your 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 point that uh, grid reliability has actually been decreasing. Uh, I think the most stark example that most people don't know about is that there's actually been more power plant shutdowns in many areas of the country. New England is one, New York is another, Texas is another, it's really actually all over, in which more power plants are being decommissioned for various reasons and are being built. And the ones that are getting built have a lower capacity factor, so the number of megawatt hours is way lower. And so I think we should be concerned about that. That gets to regulatory processes and citing whether it's state or federal, that, we're, that in the kind of world that we're trying to electrify, right. we're actually de-electrifying. Uh, and, and I think that's, that, that's a, a long and complicated process that needs to be streamlined. Okay, thank you. Um, you know, we've, we've had near-term emission reductions and we'll, we are, but we are still, and we'll continue, I think everybody is in agreement on here, experience climate change impacts uh, until globally our greenhouse gases are reduced. But it may continue then. You know, there's stuff we don't, we don't know, you know, that we don't know into our future. How do we create economic conditions for innovative solutions, for technology neutral, innovation open, that would increase our resilience and our disaster readiness. I mean, at the Department of Energy, you probably saw this, you probably see this as well, certainly overseeing the national labs. Dr. Wainer's at a national lab. Um, are there near-term technologies uh, that can be deployed to improve our adaptation strategies? Yes, Senator. So, so uh, as I mentioned, we don't know, uh, we cannot clearly see which technologies are gonna be best. So having regulatory processes or, um, uh, mandates uh, from states and so on that allow for those new things. Instead of mandating, we're only going to have this type of technology, we're only going to have EVs, we're only going to have nuclear, we're only going to have wind, whatever it is, is poor, is poor technology policy. And so we should, we should be allowing all of those to be kind of neutrally supported, whether it's through EPA or state approvals or through funding because if you overly fund one area, you're gonna get more of that. And, and uh, being more neutral across that for regulatory and funding purposes uh, is, better, is better technology policy. Thank you. Um, in terms of you know, where we're headed, you, I thought it was interesting in your statement, you mentioned that President Bush in, uh, I guess, 2001 was trying to predict, his commission was trying to predict over 20 years where we're going to go. How do you see that accelerated now? I, I, I feel like we're on a much more accelerated path through some of the uh, bills that we've passed. Uh, how, how do you see that developing? And are we the global leader here, or are there other technologies around the globe that we're looking at? So uh, America by far leads the world in energy discovery. Manufacturing is a different topic, but when it comes to energy discovery, America rules the roost on many different metrics. So there are many things. We are accelerating, uh, Senator. There's a, is, there's a reason why that process has, has improved significantly. But you could look at California, uh, where, or you could look at what's going on in Massachusetts. Uh, Fusion is much more likely than it used to be for various reasons. 
uh, and many others. So I think, I think the acceleration of discovery has dramatically improved. We're in a much better space on, on that front. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I want to go back to my first question when I talked about electricity reliability. I, I want to submit a letter from both um, my, it was, it's to Administrator Regan from the Chairman of the West Virginia Public Service Commission and the Chairman of the Delaware Public Service Commission that, that is cautioning uh, what the administration is doing on the Clean Power Plan to look at how it will impact our okay. states. Without objection.